Welcome back. We're in Matthew chapter 23, Jesus's uh, opinion of the scribes and Pharisees. We're making progress through this and examining ourselves as well as our spiritual leaders who might be guilty of the same things the scribes and Pharisees were guilty of. We're right down now to Matthew 23 and verse 14. Um, in my Bible, the New American Standard Version, it's in brackets, uh, indicating that maybe some of the ancient manuscripts didn't include this. Uh, it does seem parenthetical because the flow seems like it go from Matthew 23, 13, right to verse number 15. Can I read verse number 13 once again to you? Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people, for you do not enter in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Now skip over verse number 14 and see how 15 flows. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel around on sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. And so he's talking about the whole, you know, uh, preventing people from entering into the kingdom of heaven, and but yet still you, you're quote unquote evangelizing, going out there to try to win people to to become you know Jews and to to, to put themselves under the banner of Judaism. And he says, but when you do that, that the ultimate result is is that you make them you know uh, just as wicked as as yourselves. You're not teaching that person true heart-generated holiness. You're just teaching them, you know, all of your twistings and perversions of the, of the law, and you're setting this ungodly example, and so they follow your example, and they're just as deceived as you are, thinking that they're on the road to eternal life when they're actually on the road to the fire of hell. Okay, and you, you make him twice the son of hell. That kind of sounds like he's saying, you're all going to hell, and all of your converts are going to hell as well. Why? Because uh, they weren't true believers as, as, as indicated by their lifestyle. Okay, where people always say by faith, always by grace, it's never, never changed. And, and these guys, you know, didn't have true faith. Well, they didn't believe in Jesus. He was God in the flesh. They didn't believe in him, obviously. They wouldn't have killed him. Okay, and that was, their unbelief was, was revealed not only by their killing of Jesus, but by their daily lifestyle. They disobeyed God, whom they professed to believe in. Complete hypocrites, incomplete deception. Now, jump back up to verse number 14, if you would. Um, I, I think it's cool, uh, but it just didn't seem to fit the flow so well. But I, but I think it's still a, a cool verse worthy of our examination. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour widows' houses. Now, what does he mean by that? Uh, they literally eating the, uh, the, you know, taking the bricks and mortar of widows' houses and the, and the, and the two-by-fours and, and the studs in the wall and, and eating them? No, of course not. He, that's just an expression for you are taking what belongs to them. Devour is, of course, a word of that, that kind of uh, implies a greediness. You're devouring what widows have. Uh, you're, you're, you're stealing from them. Now, how could you steal from a widow? Well, widows are generally... Uh, you know, if anyone's apt to be gullible, widows are often in that category, unfortunately. They're trusting and believing and look to spiritual leaders you know, with, with kind of an awe, you know, and they're most likely to be taken advantage of. And so the scribes and Pharisees finding widows um, were, had figured out a way to try to get money out of those widows' pockets into their pockets. Okay? Wow, doesn't that sound like some of the TV preachers and, and, and you know, so-called evangelists that we hear today, they're all about money. And they're even telling the poorest people to send your money in because that's going to be the answer for you and so forth. And taking it from widows, gullible widows. Oh, my goodness. This has application to our day and age. How did they, how did they convince those widows to, to give them money? Well, it was offerings. You know, help me help the poor, or help my ministry, or or if you bless me, God will bless you. You know, because I'm uh, anointed. You know, the same tricks that they use today to get money out of people. Uh, Jesus gives a little bit more insight into this in the second part of verse number fourteen, and he, he, when he says, "And for a pretense, you know, for the excuse." to try to ask for those offerings from those widows, you make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive greater 
condemnation. Oh my goodness, everybody reaps what they sow and everyone's punishment ultimately is gonna be just. And so these guys are really in for, you know, the screws. Um, so I, I don't know exactly precisely how they're doing it, but I know how they do it today. You know, you get a letter in the mail from this TV evangelist and he says, uh, please send this envelope back with your prayer request and your best donation to help me continue to broadcast my message, you know, around the world as we're transforming lives for the glory of God, you know. And, and you study out the guy and he's living in a mansion and he's, you know, driving uh, the nicest car and wearing the nicest clothes and so forth. And, and it's all just uh, a ruse to get money out of people's pockets into their pockets. And it's done under the guise of, I'll pray for you, and you give God your best, and God then will give you his best. It's almost like buying an indulgence, you know. It's that same old story uh, that we've always had uh, within Christendom. And so these guys were, were doing it. And it's being done today, as I just cited to you some of those examples. But anytime a spiritual leader takes advantage of a, sees a weakness in somebody and takes advantage of that weakness to profit themselves, they're no different than the scribe or the Pharisee. Verse number uh, 16 now, since we already did 15. Woe to you blind guides who say, whoever swears by the temple, that's nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple is obligated. This one we covered back you know, a long time ago. We looked at the Sermon on the Mount and we jumped up to chapter 23 to, to see the elaboration of what was really going on. But the, the uh, scribes and Pharisees had invented a way that it was okay to lie. You could swear by the temple and if you, if you said, I swear by the temple, I will do such and such, you didn't have to do it. You, it could, you, it's okay to tell a lie. But if you swear by the gold in the temple, then you were you're okay. then you had to keep your word. Um, amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> Can't believe it, right? But it's true according to what Jesus said. I'll see you next time. Heavenward Seven is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.